all right welcome back guys in this video you will learn how to use the text tool inside photoshop let's get started all right so let's start by selecting the text tool you can press the t key or select it from the toolbar right here on the left with the text tool selected you have different settings relating to the text tool here on the options bar to create your text just click once and you can be able to type the text just like so then to confirm this text don't hit the enter key because right now if i were to press the enter key i will add space for another paragraph of text so to confirm your text press the escape key or click on this button on the options bar now to make sure you and i are on the same track let's reset everything so i'll go to the characters panel by clicking on this button click here and choose reset character i'll also click on the paragraph tab right here click again here and choose reset paragraph instead of clicking once to add text you can also click and drag to create this box and once you release the text box will be filled with text automatically Now, sometimes you might want to fill a particular shape with text. So, for instance, I can grab my ellipse tool. Then I'll make it no fill. And make it red stroke. Now, if I need to fill this shape with text, I simply select my text tool. Then make sure the ellipse layer is selected. Then I just move inside and click. The downside to this is that if you move this ellipse as you can see the text does not go along with it. So let's press Ctrl Z to undo that change and put the two layers into one group. Now with my move tool I can be able to move the ellipse and the text inside all together. I can also press Ctrl T to transform the whole group. Just like so. Now, other times you might also want to add text on a path. So, for instance, let's say you need to add text on top of this ellipse path. So, with your text tool, don't click inside like we did previously, but hover to the path and just click. As you can see, random text is generated. You can increase the size and change the text. Now, as you can see, I want this text to be aligned to the top. But if I come here and try to adjust it with the spacebar, it is going to work, but it will not be precise. What if I need to take the text backward? It will not even work at all. So what you simply have to do here is to hold the control key or the command key. That is going to switch you to this arrow and you can be able to click on that point right there to break them down. Now we have two points. This point to the right, is the end point of the text and the point to the left is the beginning point of that text i can be able to click on the beginning point and move it to my desired location just like so now while moving the text if you drag it inside it will be aligned to the inside and if you drag it outward it will be aligned on the path to the outside if you move the beginning point of this text towards the end point the whole type is going to disappear so always make sure there is some space in between the two points. Now in this document, I need to add some text here. So with my text tool, I'm just going to click here. Then I'll input my text. And confirm it. Then I'll press Ctrl plus T. And bring the text up. Then I'll click here to go to the characters panel. Click here and reset the characters panel to make it default and this is how the text looks by default with this default font so i'm going to click here and change the font to times new romance and i'll click on color and pick white now as you can see i want the text to enlarge from this section to this section but if i press ctrl plus t to transform it The whole text becomes bigger so i'm going to cancel out by clicking on this button and what i will do instead is to add the tracking to add tracking to text 
make sure the whole text is selected and then here on the characters panel you enter the tracking value here by default it is set to zero you can also hover the mouse on this icon and scroll to the right to increase the tracking just like so as you can see the tracking increases the space in between all the letters again i'm going to undo that because there is a better way to do tracking and that is to select the whole text then hold the alt key that will be the option key and press the right arrow key on your keyboard and by doing that you can also see on the characters panel the value we got 640 this is how i wanted it to be so i'm going to click on this button to confirm it then i'm just going to reduce its opacity to like 60 percent just like so and as you can see the whole text looks nice and it matches the background so always remember tracking is the spacing in between the whole text layer let's now proceed to learn what is scanning in the previous example we learned tracking now let's understand kerning for that i'm going to select this text layer here on the layers panel and scale it up by pressing ctrl t then with my text tool i'm going to select everything here to adjust the kerning if we go to the characters panel you can see that the default kerning value is set to metrics but as you click to change that value it changes quite alright up to 410 but by the time you release it defaults back to zero that is because kerning does not work like tracking kerning affects the spacing in between two characters so for instance i can come in between the t and the h here just click there once now i'll come over here to the kerning and input maybe a hundred hit enter as you can see the space in between these two characters increases so i can also come in between the h and the i and input 100 here again to make sure we have equal kerning here and here so tracking affects the whole text layer while kerning affects the individual characters i'm going to set everything back to default by putting zero here coming into coming in between the t and the h and inputting zero there as well then i'll press on this button to confirm now on the text down here as you can see the spacing in between these characters is too close so if i need to increase the spacing we can adjust that here on the characters panel by adjusting the leading now to select this whole text just double click on the text thumbnail here as you can see everything is selected so let's adjust the leading or the spacing in between the lines so i'll click here and scroll to the right at a leading of 16 points, you can see how the leading has increased the spacing in between the lines. And if we take it down to 7, you can see how close the spacing is. So while working with text, it is a very good thing to understand kerning, tracking and leading. Now, currently we have been working on the characters panel. Let's switch to the paragraphs panel here. As you can see on the paragraphs panel, we can adjust things such as the left margin, the right margin, and the indentation. And as we can see up here, our text is currently left aligned. So if I want it to be center aligned, I'll just click on this button. And if I want it to be aligned to the right, I click here. Let's go back to left alignment and let's adjust the margin here. As you can see, the left margin is currently set to zero points. But if I click here and scroll to the right, I increase that up to 8.5 points and we get this spacing around here. Below that, we get the indent for the first line. This is like paragraphing. So I can just click here to scrub to adjust exactly how the first line looks. By setting this button to a value of 16.5, we get this paragraph style text here. Now let's return back to the characters panel because there are many options here which you need to know. Now as you can see, I have this text inside the heart shape and my intention is to apply some bold to this text. So with my text tool, I will choose this font, the Edwardian script and if I click here to review the font options or the font weight options, you can see that the font has just the regular weight. So this means that we are currently limited to just this option. But Photoshop has a way of applying fake bold to text and to do that you click on this button here you can also click here and make sure full bow is selected 
by selecting that you also see that this button is highlighted apart from applying fake bold you can also make the text fake italics if it doesn't come with italics because as we click here you can see we have just the regular option so i can make it fake italics by clicking here this is how it looks without it and this is how it looks with fake italics applied and i'm going to scale the text up and center align it here then confirm now if we click and hold on the text tool for a moment we reveal these other options here we have been working with the horizontal type tool let's understand how to use the vertical type tool the horizontal type tool helps you to type horizontally and the vertical type tool helps you to type vertically that's just what it does apart from that all the options still work the same like those found with the horizontal type tool let's just select it and as you can see i need to input some text inside this box but right now if i were to click text is going to fill this box which is not what i want so i'll make sure it is not selected here on the layers panel by clicking on this empty portion now i can be able to click somewhere around here and input this random text just like so then click on this button to confirm now you are not always limited to the default text styles inside photoshop you can also click on this button to enter the warp mode and we have different settings and options here on this dialog box currently they are grey out because no warp option has been applied if i change the style from none to maybe flag you see we can be able to adjust the bend value or the bendiness of the flag you can click here and you see how that reflects on this portion of the screen if i take it to the right this is what we get i can also adjust the horizontal distortion value just like so or take it this way now one thing that is very common inside dialog boxes inside photoshop is each time you have messed things up you can always hold the alt key that will be the option key you will always get this button here to reset everything like as you can see here i've messed up this text so i'm going to hold the alt key and i will get this reset option and i can click on it to set everything back to default i can again enter here and choose flag and simply adjust the bend value like so then click ok then confirm now i'll switch back to the horizontal type tool and add another random text here i'll press ctrl t to scale it up just like so now assuming you need to transform this text you can press ctrl plus t and again we get the warp option here if you click here you can be able to click on this button and choose the other options we have seen previously with the warp tool so as you can see with the flag option the bend value is now giving us a numerical value here which we can change so it is currently set to 50 i can click here and scroll the mouse wheel up and you see how that change affects how bendy the wave actually looks if you look at the layers panel you can be able to tell which layers have the warp effect applied to them as you can see here is a normal text layer which represents this layer on the screen no warp has been applied but if you look on these two layers we get this dash at the bottom indicating the warp option all right hopefully you found something very useful in this video thank you very much for watching and if you found something very interesting support our channel by subscribing and i'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow good luck